Hi, I'm Charlene Bybee, Spark City Councilwoman Ward 4 and Mayor Pro Tem. I'm here today to give my uh, Ward 4 update. And it's a time, it's, it's a rough time right now for this community, for this region. We've got so much going on. Uh, number one of which is wildfires that are threatening our lake, that are burning north and south of us, uh, our air quality. Uh, it's, it's, it's been stressful, really stressful uh, for our community and our region. Uh, and, and it's, it kind of, it, it rolls into the stresses that I think most of us are feeling for the last 18 months. You know, we really, uh, COVID has been, uh, we all thought, I thought it'd be gone two or three months uh, by last summer, and obviously it wasn't. And, and COVID is still, unfortunately, a reality in this community, in this country, in the world right now still uh, because of the Delta variant. And we don't know what variant's coming next. But on, on that note, I wanted to share a personal story uh, and I know people are just, they're tired. They're tired of the masks. They're tired of, of not being able to live their lives like we normally do. And it's exhausting. And it's hard to just keep hammering on what we should be doing or what we need to do. But I think uh, I kind of had a reality check this weekend um, with my dad, a personal story I wanted to share with you uh, because it really made me stop and think. Uh, first of all, my dad's 91 and I worked really hard to keep him protected. Uh, did all his grocery shopping, really didn't kind of put him in jail, didn't really let him go anywhere and do anything to keep him safe. Uh, we chose for him to be vaccinated and uh, right at the beginning of the year because he was eligible. And he wound up getting COVID about a month ago, uh, despite being vaccinated. And despite the fact he really is not even out you know, we, we can't even figure out where he got it because he's, he's really at home most of the time. And so it's a mystery to us where he got it. But the good news is he only had a loss of smell. You know, a little bit of shortness of breath, but really loss of smell was all. We had him tested and didn't think it'd be positive, and he was. So he, he wound up not getting sick. And I really feel like the vaccine saved his life. I mean, at 91 years old, one of the most susceptible are the elderly and the vaccine did its job. So I really am thankful for that and that we did have him vaccinated because for him uh, and for us, it was the right decision. Well, this uh, past weekend, we wound up in the emergency room at Renown uh, for a un totally unrelated, not COVID related, another health issue. Uh, and it was, it was unbelievable to look at the, the stark reality of the hospitals and the staff and what they're dealing with right now. Because I was there in the ER looking at the amount of people that were there. The beds were full, so even if they had to admit him, we didn't know where they were going to put him. Uh, thank goodness they didn't have to admit him and he was able to be released. But they, they just are overwhelmed and I felt so um, much compassion and and really, you know, gratefulness for the medical staff who's working with the amount of people that are uh, in the hospital right now and coming to the ER uh, with, with this surge that we have. Um, it's real, it's real. And the nurse, as we were, she was wheeling my dad out to go out to our car. She said in four days of work, my dad was only the third patient that was not admitted. And not saying they were all admitted for COVID, but they've had so many admissions and only three people she was able to not admit to the hospital. And, and it really was a reality check for me that uh, this is still real, unfortunately. Lots of people that are sick and uh, the hospitals are pressured right now. And like I said, not necessarily all COVID, but uh, it, it just made me realize that I need to just keep doing what I'm supposed to be doing, um, washing my hands, um, I chose to get vaccinated. I believe that's personal choice and I support, you know, your personal choice of what you choose to do, what's right for you between you and your family and your doctor. Uh, but I chose to be vaccinated. I chose to have my dad vaccinated. And, um, but I think really as we move forward, uh, realizing that it is still here and we just kind of have to be a little more patient and we can get through all of this together. And uh, I think, I'm looking for the light at the end of the tunnel because I'm the eternal optimist. 
and looking for this surge to end. And I think a lot of us can help with that as we really think about where we're going, what we're doing, and, and being um, just being mindful. And, and I think at the end of the day, with the stress that COVID has produced, now we've got the wildfires and the air quality and uh, international affairs that uh, there's just so much negativity and, and things that are really stressful to all of us that we're all um, not as patient as we might have been before. And I would really just call on people to, to just, to, to remember to be kind. We've gotta be kind to each other. And when, when we attack each other, either on social media or in person, uh, it's, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't solve anything. And I think if we really just try to be kind to each other, to be respectful, I think be respectful of everyone and everyone who doesn't agree with you. Uh, I think that's a, a positive message that could carry forth and make a difference, at least in your everyday life, in my everyday life. It's something that I strive to do, uh, and I hope that you do too. And I thank you for joining me. Uh, you can reach me anytime online. Uh, my email and my phone number are on the screen, and I uh, look forward to talking to you uh, next time. Thanks.